Good morning, everyone, and happy birthday to Israel on her 75th anniversary. But actually, Israel is a lot older than 75 years old. Israel is called Eretz Yisrael, the land of Israel. And the five letters of the word Yisrael is an acronym. It's the initials of our three patriarchs and four matriarchs. The Yud of Yisrael stands for Yitzchak and Yaakov. The Shin stands for Sarah. The Resh stands for Rivka and Rachel. The Aleph stands for Avraham. And the Lamed stands for Leah. So the land of Yisrael is the land of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah. And indeed, it was when Abraham was 75 years old that God told him, Lech Lecha, go to the land that I will show you and I will give it to you and your descendants. So the land of Israel is the land of our ancestors. And it's not 75 years old, but it's actually 3,800 years old. But the truth is, it's a lot older than that. When the Torah begins with, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Rashi, the classical commentary on the Torah, Rabbi Shlomo Yitzchaki, asks a question. If the Torah is a book of guidance, of instructions, <clears throat> of how to live our lives morally and ethically and spiritually, why does it begin with the story of creation? The Torah is not a history book. And here's what Rashi answers. That the reason the Torah begins with the story of God creating the world in six days is because God created the world with the plan and the intention to give the land of Israel to the Jewish people as their eternal home, as the nation that he chose to live in the land of Israel. And Rashi says, that God knew that there would be nations of the world that would say that the Jewish people have no rights to the land of Israel, that they stole the land from other nations, as we hear the accusations today in the UN and in other countries around the world. And therefore, God begins with the story of creation to illustrate and to demonstrate and to proclaim that God is the creator of the whole world, and therefore the world belongs to God. God is the landlord. And therefore God says, since I created it, I can choose to whom to give which piece of land. And I chose to give the land of Israel to the Jewish people. And the fact of the matter is, while there may be 193 countries in the world, there is only one country in the world that everyone universally refers to as the Holy Land. And that's the land of Israel, known as the Holy Land. Why is it the Holy Land? There's only one reason, because the Torah says that it's the Holy Land. The Torah says that God chose it from all the lands and chose to give it to the Jewish nation. And so when they call it the Holy Land, it's a recognition that this land has spiritual value and holiness that no other country has. And it's only so because God imbued it with that holiness. And that's what Israel does. Israel is not just a beautiful country a lovely country, which is most, one of the most phenomenal success stories in modern history. But much more than that, it's a place that draws out the holiness of the Jewish people. When we come to the land of Israel, it brings out our higher godly selves and allows us to express ourselves more Jewishly, proudly as a nation and how fortunate is our generations from all the generations that we are witnessing the biblical prophecies of the return to Israel, the miraculous return that all the prophets foretold and that we and our children and our grandchildren can visit Israel and see with their eyes what our ancestors prayed for for generations in diaspora next year in Jerusalem. We can go to Jerusalem and see the city alive with Jewish pride and kiss the stones of the Western Wall and pray there as our ancestors did thousands of years ago. This is one of the greatest blessings in our generation and deserves the support of every Jew around the world. Regardless of what the nations of the world may say, what's important is not what they say, but what we do as a Jewish people. Often when we take trips to Israel as a synagogue, when we land at Ben Gurion, many of the members of the synagogue who ordinarily don't wear a kippah when they are in Palm Beach or New York City, take out their kippah and put it on their heads. 
and wear it throughout the 10 day trip wherever they go. And I remember once a person said to me, Rabbi, I'm not being a hypocrite. I know I don't wear my kippah back home. When I come to Israel, I always wear my kippah because I realize that I'm in God's home, in God's residence, in the palace of the king. I'm in the Holy Land, and therefore it requires and warrants a greater level of recognition and respect for God. Israel brings out our greater angels as individuals, as a nation. Long live Israel. May Israel continue to grow and prosper, and may the nations of the world stop accusing Israel of stealing their land, but learn to live in peace with Israel and recognize that Israel is a blessing, not just for the Middle East, but for all of humanity. And we pray that very soon Israel will be able to live in security and peace with all her neighbors. Mazel Tov. Have a wonderful day. And do a mitzvah today to support the land of Israel. Have a wonderful day.